Welcome back, little ones. Welcome back, family members. Glad you all can make it back to another glorious day that the Lord has made. I hope you all made it through safely. And um, we, if you are here this morning, guess what? Father God gave you another day. He opened your eyes this morning. You are truly blessed. We're blessed. Hallelujah. We are better than blessed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Father God, I love you all, and Father God loves you more. Let us get right into prayer. Make sure you give him all the honor, praise, and glory, because you belong to him and only him. He's greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, we come to you this morning to say thank you. Thank you, my Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we say thank you. We're grateful to you and for you. We're grateful for who thou art. Thou art thou, Father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Your name is to be hallowed each and every day, all day. We thank you, Father, for waking us up this morning to another glorious day. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And let us not be anxious for anything. Okay? Let us wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you for you being who you are. You are the Most High, the Holy One of Israel, our Heavenly Father, creator of the heavens and the earth. You are awesome in all your ways. You are holy, pure, righteous, knowing no sin, God, a just God, the one and only. Holy, holy, holy is thy God. Holy, pure, and righteous, the almighty, the one and only. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we say thank you, Father. We can never say enough thank you. We know that your, your name is faithful and true. There's no God before you, no God beside you, and there will be no God after you. Glory be to God. You are omnipotent, omniscient. You stand alone. You stand alone. Hallelujah. And you have the victory, you know. You are in charge, you always have been, you always will be. And you have the victory. The victory is already won. It's only a matter of timing. It's your will, your way, your timing. And you and us and we and you, we have the victory. You and us and we and you, there ain't nothing we can't do. And you and us, you strengtheneth us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we plead the blood of Jesus over our home, over the foundation of our home, over each and every one of us in our home, our going, our coming, over our belongings and our possessions. Father God, we ask in the mighty name of Jesus Christ when you place a head of protection around our home, around the foundation of our home, around each and every one of us in our home, our going and our coming, over our belongings and our possessions. Father God, we ask in the mighty name of Jesus Christ may you please bless our home, bless the foundation of our home, bless each and every one of us in our home, our going and our coming, over our belongings and our possessions. And Father God, we know, only you know what we have need of is your will, your way. Hallelujah. And Father God, we know no weapons formed against us shall prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Father God, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that you would open the hearts and minds of all those that they may receive you into their life to be their Lord and Savior if they haven't already. And that includes our family members, loved ones, and friends, strangers, and enemies. We have many family members that have not given their life. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that they do so before it's too late. And if they've fallen away, if they've given their life and they've fallen away for whatever reason, Father God is a merciful and a, and a holy, pure, righteous God. And he's a just God. He's full of grace and mercy. So please repent. Please repent. If you've fallen away for whatever reason, please repent. And ask Father God's forgiveness. And turn from your wicked ways. That means you're going to strive for holiness and holiness only. Don't, don't purposely sin. Okay? Father God, we thank you. We can never say enough thank you. We thank you, Father God. For your holy angels that watch over us day and night, each and every day. Even while we work and play and while we are blessed. We thank you, Father God, for the gift of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus for the remission of our sin. The blood of the Lamb for the remission of our sin. Paid in full, though we know we need to work out our own salvation. And fear and trembling in the Most High. We are to study to show thyself approved. Thank you, Father God, for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Also known as the Comforter that guides us to all truth. Thank you, Father God. We know that. You have many names, Father. But we know that there's only one Lord, one faith, one baptism, only one. Not a trinity, only one. And know that at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. He is the Son of God. He is Father God in the flesh. Father God is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit came down that begotten body. And that same Holy Spirit dwells within us. That we seek Him in sincerity and truth with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. We should find Him. Glory be to God. Father God, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ for all men to be the head of their home. Be holy, courageous men of God, being the head of their home, heading that family in the path of righteousness for ye name's sake. Yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we fear no evil, for thou art with us. 
Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort us. Thou preparest a table before us in the presence of thine enemies. Thou anoint our head with oil. Thy cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And we'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Father God, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That you will comfort any and all, all over the world. Many are in need of comfort all over the world, including the saints. Please comfort any and all, Father God. And Father God, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ for your for your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your will, Father God. And not just your will on earth and in heaven. In our lives, in our marriages, in our homes, in our children's lives, in our grandchildren's lives, and great-grandchildren if we have any. Family members, loved ones, friends, Father God, strangers and enemies. We pray, Father God, for your will to be done. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Father God. And we know that the evil is running rampant and you must do what you must do, Father God. So we say, have your way, Father God. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And Father God, Lord Jesus, do come. Do come, Lord. No man knows the day or the hour, but we know you're coming back, Lord God. Hallelujah. It's going to be a glorious day. And Father God, we ask that you please remember your children. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, please remember your children, Father God. Have mercy on your children. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father God, we pray for all the laws of abortion to be aborted right here, right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that they don't get to take another baby's life, they are a blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray, Father God, that our president will do what is right. That he lead not to his own understanding, but acknowledge you in all thine ways, so you may direct his path. On that he be obedient and do your will. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father God, for all the safe havens to be built. Whatever means necessary, Father God, I know you will make the provisions. And we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ for all the safe agents to be provided, to, to be made. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, Father God, we pray. For as you said, Father God, whatever you say, we know it's going to be so. Your word, your word will forever stand and will not come back void. Hallelujah. Father God, as you said, for the riches and the treasures that are stored up by the wicked and the rich, that they be given to the poor and given to those whom you say for it to go to, Father God, whom you deem it to go to. And we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that any that receive a blessing from you, Father God, we say thank you and we believe it and receive it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And Father God, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that your will be done with the blessings that they receive. Your will, not our will, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Father God, we can never say enough thank you. We thank you. And we're going to be striving for holiness every day because we don't have time. Our time is up and um, nothing else is acceptable. You know, and wait upon the Lord. It's his time, his season. Everything is about the Lord. It's not what we say and it's not our timing. Hallelujah. Wait upon the Lord. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Hallelujah. Let us wait upon the Lord. Hallelujah. And while you're waiting, strive for holiness. Save souls. We're out to save souls of Christ Jesus. He's the way to truth and the life. There's no other way to salvation. Glory be to God. And everything you do, every work and deed be done. Let it be done in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Father God, let this video go forth covered by the blood of Jesus that no, nothing stops it. And it goes forth. We bind all evil, all evil spirits, all evil forces bound in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Overtaken, cast away to a place they'll never return. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Father God, please prick their hearts, open their hearts and their minds. They receive this message today. And may they... Go to see the video today. You can direct them to the video, Father. If that be your will. If not, that's okay. Because true people that are truly seeking the Lord, they're going to find it. If they're truly looking, they're going to find it. If they're not looking, they will not find it. Hallelujah. It's not about me and it's not about who, what. It's about the Lord and the Lord thy God only. Hallelujah. Everything I do is for your glory and your glory alone, my Father. It's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Father God, we can't say thank you enough. We're grateful to you and for you. And parents, please cover your children. Cover your children with the blood of Jesus. Lift your children up by prayer. Let your home be a house of prayer. Teach those children how to pray so they're not vulnerable. Lift them up by name to prayer in prayer. Please teach your children how to pray. And let us all be mindful. 
Let us all open our eyes and see what's around us. And even if you don't, have, even if you don't open your eyes, let us let us have perception. Let us seek the Lord in everything that we say and do. Let us be mindful of any and everything, because He sees and knows all things. Let us be mindful of any and everything that we say and do. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God. We can't say thank you enough. We're grateful to you and for you. We're grateful for any and everything that you do have done and will do. We love you. We honor you. We praise you. We worship you. We exalt you. God bless you, Father God. Yes, thank you, Holy Spirit. And parents, you are to set the example. The children are watching you. You are setting the example. Please set the example. Live Christ's life. For the whole, live a life of holiness for those children's sake. For God's, for, you know, for the Lord's sake. But for your children's sake as well. They're watching everything you say and do. And they're going to mimic it. Please be mindful. Hallelujah. We love you. We honor you. We praise you. We worship you. We exalt you, Father God. We praise our holy name. You worship it to be praised each and every day, all day. We glorify the holy name. To God be all the honor, praise, and glory. We love you with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Every member of our body belong to you and only you, Father God. We say, use us for your glory and your glory alone. Everything I do is for your glory and your glory alone. And you're greatly to be praised, by the way, Father God. Hallelujah. And we love you with an everlasting love and will never forsake thee. And we seal this prayer to you, my Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, with an holy kiss. And it's in the holy, precious, mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that we pray. Amen and hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. If you haven't given your life to Christ, you have the opportunity to do so right here, right now. Please do so. Uh, here, have you heard the good news? The good news is Jesus Christ, and he's coming back. Not only he's coming back, he's coming back for a spotless, blameless, unblemished bride. And if you are ready to do what is right and receive Jesus Christ into your life to be your Lord and Savior, then please say his prayer. And don't just say it. Mean it from your heart that you're going to receive him into your life to be your Lord and Savior. You're going to seek him in sincerity and truth with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Then please say his prayer. I pray to you, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I am sorry. And please forgive me for my sins against your word. I believe you died on the cross and shed your holy sinless blood and was risen from the dead three days later after being crucified. Help me to seek eternal life, live a life of holiness a life pleasing and acceptable to you. Help me to study your word and obey it and repent daily. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now please repent for your sins. That means you're going to turn from your wicked ways and you're going to strive for holiness and holiness only. And you're not going to sin on purpose. And you're going to be baptized down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you in your walk with Christ. And remember, it's not a religion. It's a personal relationship between you and the Lord thy God. A commitment and love. We in the body of Christ, we welcome you. Welcome my new brother and sister to the body of Christ. May we edify one another. Pray with and pray for one another. Pray without ceasing. Fast. Be in one another's virgins. Give love and charity. Because they cover a multitude of sin. Glory be to God. Amen. Again, welcome my new brother and sister to the body of Christ. We love you and Father God loves you more. God bless you. We're going to go into scripture. Hallelujah. And today Father God has given me 2 Corinthians chapters 8 to 11. And we shall read them. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. How that in the great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves, praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift, and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God, insomuch that we desire Titus, that as he had begun, so he would also finish in you 
the same grace also. Therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith, and utterance, and knowledge, and in all diligence, and in your love to us, see that ye abound in this grace also. I speak not by commandment, but by occasion for the for of the fortness of others, and to prove the sincerity of your love. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. And herein I give my advice, for this is expedient for you, who have begun before, not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. I now, therefore, perform the doing of it, that, there, that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which he hath. For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he hath not. For I mean not that other men be eased and ye burdened, but by an equality, that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want, that their abundance also may be a supply for your want, that there may be equality. As it is written, he that had gathered much had nothing over, and he that had gathered little had nothing had no lack. But thanks be to God, which put the same earnest care into the heart of Titus for you. For indeed he accepted the exhortation, but being more forward of his own accord, he went unto you. And we have sent with him the brother, whose praise is in the gospel throughout all the churches. And not that only, but who was also chosen unto churches to travel with us with his grace, which is administered by us to the glory of the same Lord and declaration of your ready mind. Avoiding this, that no man should blame us in this abundance which is administered by us, providing for honest things, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. And we have sent with them our brother, whom we have oftentimes proved diligent in many things, but now much more diligent upon the great confidence which I have in you. Whether any do inquire of Titus, he is my partner and fellow helper concerning you, or our brethren be inquired of. They are the messengers of the churches and the glory of Christ. Wherefore, shew ye to them and before the churches the proof of your love and of our boasting on your behalf. Chapter 9. For as touching the ministering to the saints, it is superfluous for me to write to you. For I know the fortness of your mind, for which I boast of you to them of Macedonia, that Achaia was ready a year ago, and your zeal hath provoked very many. Yet have I sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this behalf, that, as I said, ye may be ready. Lest haply, if they of Macedonia come with me, and find you unprepared. We, that we say not ye, should be ashamed in this same confident boasting. Therefore I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go before unto you and make up beforehand your bounty, whereof ye had noticed before, that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not as of covetousness. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always, having all sufficiency and all things, may abound to every good work. As it is written, He hath dispersed abroad, He hath given to the poor, His righteousness remaineth forever. Now He that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us thanksgiving to God. For the administration of this service not only supplieth the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. Whilst by the experiment of this ministration they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ, 
and for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men, and by their prayer for you, which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Chapter 10. Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am base among you, but being absent am bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walk according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Do ye look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trusts to himself that he is Christ's, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ's, even so are we Christ's. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord hath given us for edification and not for your destruction, I should not be ashamed, that I may not seem as if I would terrify you by letters. For his letters, say they, are weighty and powerful, but his boldly, but his bodily presence is weak, excuse me, Lord, and his speech contemptible. Let such in one think this, that such as we are in word by letters, when we are absent, such will we be also indeed when we are present. For we dare not make ourselves of the number, or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they measuring themselves by themselves, and comparing themselves among themselves, are not wise. But we will not boast of things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule which God hath distributed to us, a measure to reach even unto you. For we stretched out ourselves, we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, excuse me, Lord, as though we reached not unto you. For we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ, not boasting of things without our measure, that is, of other men's labors, but having hope, when your faith is increased, that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly, to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you, and not to boast to an, in another man's line of things made ready to our hand. But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord, for not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commendeth. Chapter 11. Would to God ye could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me, for I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means, as a serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. For I suppose I was not a whit behind the very chiefest apostles. But though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge. But we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. Have I committed an offense in abasing myself that ye might be exalted? Because I have preached to you the gospel of God freely? I robbed other churches, taking wages of them, to do you service. And when I was present with you, and wanted, I was chargeable to no man. For that which was lacking to me, the brethren which came from Macedonia supplied. And in all things I have kept myself from being burdensome unto you. And so will I keep myself. As the truth of Christ is in me, no man shall stop me of this boasting in the regions of Achaia. Wherefore, because I love you not, God knoweth, but what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. 
Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. I say again, let no man think me a fool. If otherwise, yet as a fool, receive me, that I may boast myself a little. That which I speak, I speak it not after the Lord, but as it were foolishly, in this confidence of boasting. Seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. For ye suffer fools gladly, seeing ye yourselves are wise. For ye suffer if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. I speak as concerning reproach, as though he had been weak. How be it, whereinsoever any is bold, I speak foolishly. I am bold also. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labors, more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths off. Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. And journeyings often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches, who is weak, and I am not weak. Who is offended, and I burn not. If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, knoweth that I lie not. In Damascus, the governor of under Aretas, the king, kept the city of the Damascenes with a garrison, desirous to apprehend me. And through a window in a basket was I let down by the wall, and escape his hands. Amen? Amen. In our regular reading, we're still in the first book of Samuel, and we're on chapter 22. People join David. Chapter 22 of 1 Samuel. People join David. When David escaped from the town of Gath, he went to Adullam Cave. His brothers and the rest of his family found out where he was, and they followed him there. A lot of other people joined him too. Some were in trouble, others were angry or in debt, and David was soon the leader of 400 men. David left Edelam Cave and went to the town of Mizpah in Moab, where he talked with the king of Moab. Please, David said, let my father and mother stay with me, stay with you, excuse me, Lord, until I find out what God will do with me. So he brought his parents to the king of Moab, and they stayed with him while David was in hiding. One day the prophet Gad told David, Don't stay here, go back to Judah. David then left and went to Herod Forest. Saul was sitting under a small tree on top of the hill at Gibeah when he heard that David and his men had been seen. Saul was holding a spear, and his officers were standing in front of him. He told them, Listen to me, you belong to the Benjamin tribe. So if that son of Jesse ever becomes king, he won't give you fields or vineyards. He won't make you officers in charge of thousands or hundreds, as I have done. For you are all plotting against me. Not one of you told me that my own son Jonathan had made an agreement with him. Not one of you cared enough to tell me that Jonathan had helped one of my officers rebel. Now that son of Jesse is trying to ambush me. Doeg the Edomite was standing with the other officers and spoke up. When I was in the town of Noah, of Nob, I saw that son of Jesse. He was visiting the priest Ahimelech, the son of Ahitub. Ahitub. Ahimelech talked to the Lord for him, then gave him food and the sword that he had belonged to Goliath the Philistine. Saul sent a message to Ahimelech and his whole family of priests at Nob, ordering them to come to him. When they came, Saul told them, Listen to me, you son of Ahitub. <laughs> Certainly, your majesty. Ahimelech answered, Saul demanded, Why did you plot against me with that son of Jesse? 
You helped him rebel against me by giving him food and a sword and by talking with God for him. Now he's trying to ambush me. Your majesty, none of your officers is more loyal than David. Ahimelech replied, He's your son-in-law and the captain of your bodyguard. Everyone in your family respects him. This isn't the first time I've talked with God for David and has never made you angry before. Please don't accuse me or my family like this. I have no idea what's going on. Ahimelech, Ahimelech Saul said, you and your whole family are going to die. Saul shouted to his bodyguards, these priests of the Lord helped David. They knew he was running away, but they didn't tell me. Kill them. But the king's officers would not attack the priests of the Lord. Saul turned to Doeg, who was from Edom, and said, Kill the priests. On that same day, Doeg killed 85 priests. Then he attacked the town of Nob, where the priests had lived, and he killed everyone there, men, women, children, and babies. He even killed their cattle, donkeys, and sheep. Ahimelech's son, of Abiathar was the only one who escaped. He ran to David and told him, Saul has murdered the priest of Nob at Nob. David answered, That day when I saw do it, I knew he would tell Saul, Your family died because of me. Stay here. Isn't the same person trying to kill both of us? Don't worry. You will be safe here with me. Mm. Tomorrow, God's willing, we'll read chapter 23 of the first book of Samuel. David rescues the town of Kila. I love you all to love the Lord. Tell your loved ones that you love them. We're not promised tomorrow. And you give God glory. You praise his holy name. Because he woke you up this morning. We are truly blessed. Yes. You all have yourself a good weekend. And stay out of trouble. I know. Uh, tell your loved ones that you love them. Tell them about Father God who is Jesus Christ in the flesh. Father God is the Holy Spirit. Now Holy Spirit came down that begotten body. And that same Holy Spirit dwells within you and I. If you seek him in sincerity and truth. With all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. If you have aught with anybody, please forgive them. I don't care who it is or what it is. Forgive them. If you want Father God to forgive you, you must forgive. And try to strive for holiness. You all, strive for holiness. Because that's the only way that we're going to get into heaven. you got to live a life of holiness. You can't straddle on the wall, off the wall, in between, in the devil's playground. you got to do what is right. Choose ye this day whom you shall serve. And you can't serve two masters. You're going to love one and hate the other. Or, 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 or deal with one and despise the other. You know what I'm saying. I reiterate the, the words, but regardless, you know what is what is said. I love you all to love the Lord. And Father God loves you more. You all have yourself a beautiful, blessed day and a beautiful, blessed weekend. You all have a blessed day. God bless you. Bye, little ones. Bye, family members. God bless you. Bye-bye.